Hello and welcome to Inside Healthcare. We begin this program with some advice and important information that we think all parents will want to know about vaping, drugs, and alcohol in the digital age. It is the focus of a new documentary that we first showed on Inside Healthcare last month. It's called Not Teenagers, but Screenagers Under the Influence, and it reveals the health risks that vaping, drugs, and alcohol in the digital age poses to kids and young adults. To talk about these risks and the myths and about them, we are very pleased to have with us Mary Gusenberg, a parent coach, mm -hmm. first time on the set, so it glad is. to have you with us. Thank you. So such an important topic, so we really appreciate you yeah. taking time to be with us. Thank you. Yeah, so um, also thank you to you, because we've only seen each other through a window, <laughs> so this is great to be in person. Um, the film, what, we're at the begin in telling you about the film. The whole title is Screenagers Under the Influence of Drugs, Vaping, addressing vaping, alcohol, drugs in the digital age. And the digital age is the key thing in all of exactly. these components, isn't it? Exactly. And how are kids accessing this? How are kids getting access? And those devices and how we can come alongside with that. And um, I think the documentary highlights eight different yes. myths and things like that. We can't mm -hmm. get into all of them in this right. program, but maybe we can touch on a couple of them. Like, well, like one of them, like um, about vaping. Yeah. What is one of the biggest myths about vaping? Thank you. Yes. Okay, one of we'll the have myths. A graphic, I think, that can kind of talk about too. Exactly. Too. Yeah. And the graphic will show too that the myth is that vaping is safer than using traditional leaf cigarettes. And it actually isn't. One pod, so one pod that they would put in their electronic cigarette or vaping device has as much nicotine as an entire pack of cigarettes. Who, would, right. who would think that? Yeah. yeah, and we know that how addictive nicotine is. And you think if um, someone's taking that many puffs on a Juul or a different brand, how addictive that is. And then we think of our young people's brains aren't developed till they're 25. So we have to just slow down and give them tools to have those protective factors, have those ways of addressing so that they can say no. And talking about smoking and smokers, there's also a myth about the smokers too, and people have some misconceptions about smokers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one thing I would say is when we go back to chatting about vaping, I would say, a great tip for parents and caregivers, and when I talk about care caregivers, I want to expand that. Could be grandparents. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I have parents and grandparents and school staff that come to my workshops, and it's a beautiful way because, like yourself, a grandparent, we're learning all of this and how do I support my child and my grandchild. So when I invite you to come to a workshop, it's not just the person in that home raising that child, it's the whole family unit. Um, but where I was going to say with vaping and any of the substances we're going to talk about is how are our youth being targeted and have that conversation. How is media coming at you to make this normal so that I do, oh, well, everyone's doing it. Where actually, if we unpack that, we have also talked about the Minnesota Student Survey. Yes. Most kids aren't and it's that perception. So having that conversation with parents, caregivers to say, how do you feel targeted? What are you seeing in your social that is really calling you to be like, wait a second, that's not my friend circle, that's not what we're doing. So having those critical thinking skills. And it's challenging with everything else that they're dealing with as well. So, exactly. And I think the best thing is to get information out and some of the dispelling yes. some of those myths and stuff like that. What would be some of the other myths that yeah. people should be aware of in parents? And there's, so again, you said there's eight myths that the film unpacks, and you're right, eight myths, but we're only gonna touch on three. And the next one we wanna talk about is around alcohol. And the myth that's called out is that I can keep my kids safe if I let them start drinking at a younger age, or if I let them drink in my own home. And so first I'd invite families to just take a look go to your computer, Google what is a social host law. And I'll help you because it's unlawful for people in Minnesota um, to knowingly serve alcohol um, to a minor. 
So that's just Good FYI, just so you know. Graduation time right exactly. now. Exactly. And, parties, yeah. and family reunions. And we're going to be getting together for the celebration of the 4th of July. And um, the other thing I would call out is that studies show that kiddos, youth who drink socially at home, they're more likely to have increased drinking after they leave the home, whether they're in college or they are young adults on their own. Interesting. Yeah, evidence-based. So the film really walks deep into this. It even has called out a community in the film that has gone completely alcohol-free. And they all their kid events, they call it No Red Cup. And they're, so you think of the solo cup that we, you would walk around and have cocktails in. Um, and that, it just talks about the families coming together and celebrating their children's growth and life in sports, alcohol-free. Now, you have another graphic, too, about binging, binge yeah. drinking. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about that, too. And, and what constitutes a drink. I think that's, so when you use that, see that visual, it will help you know, oh, for young men and for women, it's this many drinks that is considered binge drinking. Yeah. It's important to know that. Oh my gosh, yeah. N you know, we've been hearing a lot too with uh, marijuana here in Minnesota mm -hmm. and uh, cannabis. What yes. do we know about cannabis? Yeah, well, the, the myth that's unpacked in the film is that, um, th that cannabis is not addictive. Where really, if you go to the CDC, the risk of developing marijuana d use disorder is greater if people start young. So again, I invite people to come see the screening learn more about vaping, learn more about how our kids are accessing alcohol and substances in this digital age. And then really when you come and see the film, we have an, a panel of experts. So we take this national message and we bring it home. It's that opportunity to say, in my community, how do I support this? What's happening? Is this really what the national news is showing, the film showed this, but what's really happening in my community? We're about out of time for our conversation, but wow. um, how can people see the screen, how can they yeah. see the film, how can uh, organization, can they host the screening and Love things it. like that, just very yeah. briefly. Yeah, so reach out to me. We do have October 5th, we have one scheduled at Oltman Middle School for South Washington County Schools. It's open to anyone, and there'll be a registration link. Reach out to me at Mary at MKG Parent Coach or go to my website because what I'd love is to invite sponsors. If this is something that you're passionate about, come and help us sponsor this and get this information to your business, to your community, to your faith community. It's just a great way to one, build a parent's toolkit and grandparent's toolkit because yes. we're so many unknowns. How do we have these conversations and come and learn and then share it with others. Well, Mary, a pleasure to have you on like the program this. with great information. Uh, I hope everyone will go, take a, mm -hmm. go out and go see that film then too. Yes, thank yeah. you. Honored to be with you, thanks. Thank you. Still ahead, um, we talk with a local doctor about helping keep our kids safe this spring and, and in the coming months and summer, so stay with us.